Call the meeting to order. Um, has everybody had a chance to review and read the minutes from our last meeting? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'd make a motion to uh, accept the minutes from the past last meeting. Second. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. I'll do a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself? Yes, aye. Okay, very good. Um, moving on to the next topic on the agenda is the review and discuss the preliminary information for cost of living. Um, I guess we got some information in our package and some as as recent as this afternoon, Brian, do you want to just go over what we have so far? Sure. <clears throat> sure. So typically what we do is we look at the CPI and we look at it in January is usually our first meeting. And then traditionally we wait for the, I think for the February numbers to come out. And then we make our de determination based upon that. Um, currently I, I printed out the overview table that shows the, I'll share it one second. Uh, so it shows the Northeast and New England and Boston, Cambridge, New England, which is, I guess, probably as drilled down as we get um, around this part, for our part. But this is where it stands. Uh, Northeast region, the 12 months ending December uh, 2021 was 7.0. Um, New England, uh, New England was 6.2. Um, and then there's a little bit more of a breakdown of the Northeast region and Boston, Cambridge, New England. Um, the latest they have is November 2021, and that's um, 5.3. Um, another indicator that we look at is Social Security. Um, and that was, I printed it out, 5.9. 5.9 for uh, the social security adjustment. That's for calendar year 2022. Um, I don't have a lot of other information from municipalities, but I hope we can get that um, between now and our, our next meeting or whenever we decide. Um, you know, the other one that we look at is FERCOG um, and they're looking at uh, 6.0 um, increase. Um, so that's the data that we have right now. We'll, I'll try to ask Amy to get um, some indications from our surrounding municipalities and the municipalities that we uh, compare ourselves with um, as to what they're thinking. You know, oftentimes we get into the situation where everybody's trying to decide at the same time. So we don't necessarily have decisions from other municipalities. Um, but that's just a, a picture of, of where we are right now, obviously. Costs have increased a lot um, the past 12 months, I think, for reasons that everybody kind of understands. Um, and that's really just the, the position we're in. Yeah. Um, is the, it, when they, they're talking about these numbers, they're monthly numbers. And I was noticing um, on that first one, you put up um, the CPI uh, document and maybe if, is that still up there yeah i can put it up yeah yeah so this one, right right so when they say 12 months ended right that's that's basically when you see november that's november going back one year and December going back one back year. One year. So what is the annual average 2020 to 2021? That I don't know. Yeah. That, that I do not know. So I feel like this, I mean, the, the inflation has really been a bit more recent. You know, I don't think it's been an inflation rate of 6% for like the full year, that 
that's my feeling, not my calculation. I don't have the data to make the calculation. So I guess I just have that question about, um, about what the numbers mean. Thought there was another chart on here. Well, that's more details. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing the 12 months, I mean, are they just saying this November minus last November? Or this December minus last December, right? Because I could believe that that would be a big jump. Year over year percent change. So like these. And so it looks like March is when prices started to rise. Should we also be considering what we expect for 2022? <clears throat> yes, we obviously want to you know, look at when, what's happened in the past year and make people whole for that. But if we expect inflation to continue at such a strong rate to make to make people wait for that for the you know, for a year or in fact a year and a half because this budget doesn't go into effect until July 1st. Not that I have a magic ball that tells me what's going to happen in the next year, but. Yeah. Right. I mean, we've always, it basically, this is just reactive and not proactive in that aspect. Right. Right. But we've also never dealt with or at least in recent memory, haven't dealt with these kinds of number numbers where it actually makes a difference rather yeah. than it's nice. Do we have a way of figuring out or looking up, what did we do in the 70s when inflation was at like 14% a year? Um, I mean, I was a child at the time, so I don't know what my town did. I just know that my, my father turned gray when he got the mortgage on the house when we moved that was at like, I don't know, 14, 15% interest rate. But, you know, you got to have a place to live with your seven children. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, that's what I remember about inflation. But um, what did the town do back then? Um, I don't think it's going to be accessible by computer or we won't have that information for tonight, but it might be interesting to know how things were handled back then. One of the things you or we need to consider, I think, is is the is the amount of money the town is taking in gonna be that much more that we can give five, six, seven percent cost of living increase. I don't I don't know the answer to that. I don't think we can, but that's and you know, because inflation is going up isn't the town's real problem. That's an a, a problem for our employees. Yeah. I mean our problem really is not so much I mean, whatever inflation is, if it's more than two and a half percent, we're in trouble because we can't raise right. our taxes by more than two and a half percent. So if we gave folks, call it six percent, we might make it through this year. Right. Yeah, because I think we're, we're not right up against the levy limit. But at some point we would get up right up against the levy limit if that's happening. 
over a long period of time. And mm -hmm. so we're really getting going to be hit by and to prop two and a half. And that's, I mean, that's, that's really the problem, right? Um, yep. It's fine. It more or less works out when inflation is low and uh, prices are going up in the you know two to 3% um, on average that, that more or less works out to <coughs> how much we can raise the levy limit. Um, I don't, I don't know if I said that correctly, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, you did. That yeah, I think you did because that, you know, when I remember back into the to the 80s and 90s, I mean, every town went pretty much on a yearly basis was forced to do attempt prop two and a half overrides. And if they failed, then they had yep. to do drastic cuts. And and in this case, in the more recent years where when you go back and look at this chart, you know, when it was doing the one to two percent we're we're living within that prop two and a half you know so i think that's understandable the other side of the coin that we go ahead tom yeah the other thing i'm i want to make sure everybody understands is if if you if we give a five percent increase this year and next year we go back to a two percent the, it's the 5% doesn't go away. That's money we got to come up with every single year from now on. I mean, that's true for whatever number we decide on, right? Next but, year, if the raise correct. is 2%, next year it's 2% right. of the one that was already raised 5%. But so it, it's that's not like, right. it's not additive, but it is multiplicative. But yep. if, I mean, using that same logic, do we anticipate that you know, how much costs will go down some will you know gasoline fluctuates and gasoline may go down again but do we and this is a question based on the 70s and 80s do we foresee other costs of food um other major well, costs going not up? if we've got inflation if we have inflation our other costs are going up as well right but even when inflation stops well, and we're, if we're back to the cola, or the, the, not the cola, the cost of living going up two or three percent again, is it going up two or three percent from the new base, or from the new could base? We foresee it going down. In which case, yes, we're giving a, a cola next year based on the increase this year, but is that because the costs have gone up that much? And are not if you can down. predict what the what the cost of living is going to be a year from now, I want to hire you. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm asking questions, <laughs> not expecting answers. Just yeah. food for thought. Yeah. And the other the other side of the coin in regards to this, you know, as as us as members of the personnel committee, and also tax we're all taxpayers that we we're looking at it from two sides of the coin too and from the, the personnel committee we're looking at trying to keep our you know looking at it from a employee standpoint keeping them status quo where they're not falling behind versus at the same point in time we're all taxpayers so that's the yep yep i agree Well, I mean, I we don't, think we've do we, probably discussed this enough. I mean, we, we know that we're going to need to have another meeting. We know that we'll yeah. be getting more information. We haven't even had a chance to decipher the um, any positions that we need to make adjustments to that we've like we've done in the past. So this probably should um, be tabled to our next meeting. We certainly have definitely some things to think about. No. no. Does anybody have any more they want to add to this topic? Yeah, I just want to add that 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 I agree that you know in terms of in terms of prop two and a half, our excess levy capacity for 
2021. So that's the amount of money that we can raise without um, through taxation. That's the amount of money that we can raise without a Prop Two and a Half override. And for 2021, that's around 1.2 million dollars um, in additional money that we could raise. Um, that it's not a reason to spend it. Um, mm -hmm. But so so our our excess levy capacity will shrink. Um, essentially when we spend more than prop two and a half lets us raise, right? In terms of how much it'll allow us to raise the 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 levy limit. Um so it is something to keep in mind. I I think I think I think you're right, expenses are up across the board. You know, whether it's an employee buying something or it's the town buying something, it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are gonna have additional costs on the outside of the the salaries, right? Mm -hmm. Um I mean, we purchase pretty much everything um, as a town, food, energy, um, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've certainly never lived this, so. No. Um, so in terms of next steps, um, we can get, uh, we'll try to get numbers from neighboring municipalities. Um, we'll try to get the, the CPI numbers from February um, when they come out. Um, I'll try to look to see when that when that happens because I don't I don't know if we want to meet before then if if that's useful or not. But okay, then I guess we'll move on to the um, the next step in the, on the agenda and we don't need to talk about the Juneteenth anymore because that was that's already been addressed by the board. Brian, you want to go over the amendment for the Christmas Eve? Yep. So several years ago, um, select board, at, well, the personnel committee recommended the select board adopted the recommendation to grant um, four hours of a Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve day holiday to allow employees um essentially to work a half day on christmas eve um and to um do whatever they do on um christmas eve afternoon and evening um in the original text of the the policy um we allowed we were going to um, allow the christmas eve day holiday only on weekdays when they fell on weekdays the intent was not to um essentially give a floating holiday when it when that when it fell on a saturday or sunday um, well, um, I certainly didn't have the foresight to realize that when Christmas Eve day falls on a Friday, um, the Christmas Eve holiday is celebrated on that Friday. Um, so essentially there wasn't, essentially there, there, the Christmas Eve day holiday was really, Christmas that time day. was already off, yeah. right? It was Christmas Day observed on Friday, so employees already had that off. Um, so there's recommended changes to the policy that the Christmas Eve day be awarded to employees when it falls on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, or a Thursday. Thereby, we don't have this situation where there's essentially 12 hours, essentially a floating holiday in there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. I would certainly support this, and I think it was in the spirit of what the select board discussed about it when we <coughs> when we took this up. So yeah. I don't know if this does this board have to um, vote on it and make a recommendation. Is that what we need to do? Yes. Okay. If anybody would like to make that a motion to recommend this to the select board? So I, I move that we recommend to the select board uh, that it be changed to Monday to Thursday for the document. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion made in this second. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Aye. Betty? Aye. Susan? Aye. And myself, aye. Okay, that's unanimous. 
Next topic is to discuss the premium pay under the American Rescue Plan Act. And this one's quite interesting. And so Brian, tell us what you got. Sure, so I just wanna go back for one second. It looks like CPI information for the Northeast region is gonna be February, it's gonna be released on February 10th. For January, it's gonna be released on February 10th. So just we'll bookmark that if we're thinking about next okay. meetings and when we might wanna make a decision. Um, so it came up in the, so the town has, um, nearly $450,000 in, we'll call it ARPA money because it's easier to say than CLFRF. Um, and that's money, uh, it's essentially um, relief or recovery money from the federal government that was given directly to the town. The state received its own portion and the town received that amount directly. It came up in the, I guess I have to say CLFRF, Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funds Committee, um, and it's an eligible expense um, of the legislation that um, essentially premium pay could be awarded to, we'll, we'll say frontline workers or essential workers. Um, and that's an eligible expense. And that's pretty much as far as the legislation goes. Um, there's, you know, there was, a, there was a, a certain amount of money that went to the states and the state is trying to figure out its own program. Um, as you saw in one of those articles. Um, and it's there's some bickering between the governor and the legislature, how that's gonna pan out um, and who's gonna make the decision as to who is eligible. Um, it seems very clear that state essential state workers are going to be eligible for premium pay. Um, and um, what happens with other workers. So uh, we're talking private sector workers are also eligible um, as to, it's it's really yet to be determined how, at least in the state of Massachusetts, how that decision is going to be made who's eligible. I mean, so the town also has the ability to do the same thing. Um, and it was recommended, it was a discussion at the, at the first committee meeting when we were throwing out ideas about premium pay for essential workers. Um, that really, I think, that really invokes the, the charge of this committee because um, mm -hmm. really, this committee talks about compensation. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, we're not looking to sort of say, okay, we're gonna do X amount of dollars per hour or anything, um, but just really to discuss the concept, um, you know, because if the recommendation is it, it's not feasible, then I don't think we wanna, um, not feasible or recommended, I should say. I, I don't think it's worth getting into the, the weeds about amounts if, it's something that we would recommend against, so. Does anybody have any questions? It, uh, I guess it sounds to me like the uh, committee that met the CLL, CLFRF committee, um, they did not necessarily have a list defining who's a front line worker and say front line, I'm thinking, um, you know, police, fire, scams, transfer station. Um, I mean, those are services that we couldn't put on hold and they deal directly with the public. Um, those ones are obvious to me. There may be others that are not so obvious to me. So I'm wondering what do people think a frontline worker is given our, just thinking about municipal workers. And I know SCEMS is really a, a, a joint venture. So that may not be under our direct ability to, uh, to um, influence, but what do, what do we, who do we think is a, or which jobs I should say, not which people, which jobs are frontline dealing with the public that couldn't be put on hold for the last two years. In the first station attendant. Yep, that's that, police, yeah. Police officers. Police. 
fire transfer uh, station I, fire but i don't know how you are gonna right, we only how you're gonna handle employee. that one <laughs> yeah there's only one person yeah. that gets paid there um I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting that the state, I think the state, the state's going to look at it as during the declared state of emergency. Um, so it's looking at it retroactive. So, I mean, if we were to, we do have the ability to go backwards and look to say if there was any, if there were any fire calls or anything mm -hmm. where people worked. Sure. Um, and I think the state also takes the approach that um, essentially anybody that, that couldn't go remote, I think is what they were. Is what they were trying to get at right um, and, that, and that is in the in that handout you gave us from the oh. one from you know the one it was done by the news station in there it says that you have that you know they're defining it as a household income at or below 300 percent of the federal poverty level and also having worked in person and not in a remote setting during the state of emergency is that language in that that's how that water happens. department yeah i mean it's it's any of those i mean well i was thinking that it, yeah i guess it was I, I i was thinking it's mostly i mean the front line yeah yeah i maybe that's a good a good challenge because i i had always assumed frontline workers who were most affected by the pandemic would be those who actually had to deal with the public and the water department. Maybe they do. Maybe I don't know what their job is very well. Um, but mean, somebody who, because you, you certainly can't like you can't plow the streets remotely, you know. So so that's sort of one definition is any job you can't do remotely. I don't think of that as really frontline. Frontline means you got to go weather and you have to be because this is a, a a pandemic we're talking about and you've got to be in contact with people and there's an elevated risk to that when you have to deal with other people if you don't you know if, you, if you're just driving the truck to the water department where you're the only person there that doesn't seem as frontliney to me but it might be that that's an it's more convenient to put the line at, were you able to go remote? So I don't, I don't really know if I have any wisdom there, but that it seemed to me that that's a difference, but maybe it shouldn't be one we worry about. Another one was, you know, how about somebody like the town clerk, for instance, if when yeah. someone needs death certificate, things of that nature, mm -hmm. was, that was not able to be yep. done remotely either. Yep. So you have that yeah. kind of contact too. Right, yeah. and that's and that's another one I was thinking of as they have to do that job, and we, you know, we put in plexiglass. We did lots of things to promote safety, but when it came, same for the police, they were the first ones to get masks and et cetera. Um, but it's still that's the kind of job where that had to be done from here, and sometimes it had to be done in somebody's car if they couldn't put on a mask. Then. So that that does strike me as a front line um, because it's dealing with the public and anybody who walks in. Yeah, I think it's easy to think about completely remote, right? And then somebody who definitely has to deal with the public and then there's this gray area of, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, Lynn was here and she was meeting people out in the parking lot and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but 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 for other people, you could in, in not the, deal with the public, right? right? And then say the the highway crews, well, mostly dealing with each other, right? Might have to be in a truck with a uh, with another person. So that's also something that's kind of in between, you know. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Keith alluded to the, the the comment about the um, sort of the income test that was proposed by the legislation and that's one of the parts that governor baker vetoed that was the that was the criteria in the legislation that needed to be considered by the 28 person committee that the that the legislature tried to set up um 
I, I, I didn't look today to see if, if they had overridden the veto or not, but, um, and obviously there's, it looks like for the state when there's a hard cap, there's obviously a hard cap on the amount that's, you know, that's awarded to each yeah. individual. Um, so, so if they, if they make these rules, we have to follow those rules. I, I don't think so. Cause I, we're direct. Because we're a direct recipient from the federal government. So right. I don't think the state can put strings on right. the money that we have. Um, yeah. it, it'd be interesting to hear, though, if. And I couldn't tell from from what I read is if. Is if the state's implementing a program that would also apply to municipal employees, I guess that's a question that I have. Because mm. if it is, I, then maybe that changes our. Our, our thinking, but. Yeah, we don't want to, I mean, it's, it would be one thing to give an employee something towards dealing with this, but we don't, they don't, in a sense, deserve to get two payments, one from the town, one from the state. Right. So maybe this is something we have to table until next month when we know more about what the state's going to do. Is, is there a timeline on when this has to be? Spent, discussed, or, or should we just make a recommendation to the, what is that acronym, the CLR committee yeah. that, that we support as a personnel committee that we want the, our town employees, that our frontline employees to be considered as possible recipients? Yeah, I think may, what's going to happen, Brian, is that the the committee, I'm on the committee, but the committee is going to say, uh, okay, but it, they're going to send it back to the personnel committee and say, you need to tell us. The personnel committee is going to have to decide who the frontline workers are and who's mm -hmm. going to get a certain amount of money. Hmm. I see. They're not willing to help figure out who's the frontline workers for us. I think there's enough that committee's got enough other things on their plate already, it's, you know, dealing with, we have a, what, two or three years to, to deal with this money, Brian. Yeah. 2024, I think. So two years. Yeah, 2024. So, so there was a deadline in, in the, so it's a legislative deadline, which, I'm not sure those are deadlines, but it, more more often they're goals. But it said March 31st in terms of when Baker would like to get checks to people. But March 31st of this year. Yeah, I, I think that's a it's a good goal to have. I don't think I want to wait another year for that. I think that's yeah. that's a good goal. Hmm. I wonder where else we can look for information about what kinds of positions should be considered frontline and is there sort of a level one, level two kind of thing where. What about Brian reaching out to the, um, your, the association that small town or whatever, or Maya or someone, someone looking at what other towns are doing. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can do that, and we can also. Isn't there I mean, a group that you belong that the town Waitley belongs to as a small town? Yep, the small uh, small town administrators association. Yes. And and obviously the the state program will have to have <clears throat> eligibility criteria. It's what it's whether the the governor. Whether the administration creates it or the legislature creates it, yeah. it really depends on what happens with the um, the legislation. Hmm. So if they want the deadline to be, they meaning at least the governor, wants the deadline to be March 31st, then there should be some movement on this by the time we have another meeting. Is that, I mean, that seems reasonable, but I know this is the state government who always gets their budget in on time, way ahead of time, so we know, you know, how to plan our own. Sorry, not. Uh, 
Uh, Keith, I just did a quick, a uh, quick search for Stam, and I'll, I mean, I'll. Hopefully, this is probably more updated, but most of the municipalities, I'd say, there's probably. Maybe 40 listed here. Oh, I think I only see two of them that are planning on doing it. Wow. And there's obviously a lot of blanks because there's about 300 and how many ever towns? 351 towns. Right. Maybe. And right now all... we're one of those blanks too, right? Right. We are, yeah. Nobody, Ashfield nobody's says made yes. any decisions yet. Uh, the yeah. one of the yeses is Ashfield Fire Police Admin WW Wastewater Treatment Plant DPW um, 75 cents per hour worked. That's so we can have more of this information. This is a great Google spreadsheet that I can okay. update, but most of them are saying. Most of them say not at this time. So do we, what else do we need from you? Or what do you need from us on this topic? Anything more tonight? No, I mean, I think we need to wait to see. I mean, I think we're in agreement that if the state's providing something, it's probably not worth. Well, let me ask a question. Could there be a situation where the state determines certain eligible employees and the personnel committee thinks differently? Um, well, so it's I could see a situation where the state lays out its thoughts on this, and they're often think they're thinking about state workers, probably you know state police, state university, state hospital, state, all these, all of these kinds of workers that they're thinking about that. And not always does the thinking line up with what we need in small towns. So I would say, I would be interested in seeing what they have to say, but I would not be um, opposed to modifying it when it makes sense. Okay. Um, so really the next step would be, let's see what the state comes up with and we'll keep this as right. an agenda item. Um, if I had to guess, they're gonna do state workers. I don't think they're gonna make this available to municipal town employees are gonna to have to get it from their towns is my guess. Right. But yeah. I don't really know what, and we may know more mm -hmm. when the ink is dry. Right. So this doesn't have a, a hard and fast deadline like say, you know, we need the COLA to to adjust the 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 budget for the annual town meeting. So I think we can let it play out a little bit and keep it as an agenda item. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next topic on the agenda is to review and discuss proposals for creation of new positions. And the first one that we had in our handout is uh, traffic control officer and that was yep. submitted by the police chief yeah so i'll give a summary but i think we should table it because jim's not available tonight um but his <laughs> so this goes along with with the whole police reform um legislation that was adopted and, and how um how he's thinking it's going to impact his department one of in one of the many ways and that is he believes it's going to be difficult to um, find, well, part-time officers generally, but also because there's, there's, there's going to be no part-time certifications. All officers are going to need full-time certification. Um, he thinks there's going to, he's going to have trouble filling details um, because a lot of the details that are filled in town and in some outside of town are not filled by either Jim or Don. Some are, but not all of them are. Um, so if we lose those part-time officers, then we're gonna have issues filling the details. Um, so what's being discussed here is the 
it's essentially the creation of a, a civilian position for um, a traffic control. He calls a traffic control officer. I don't know if that's the right term or not, but essentially it's a civilian position. It's not a sworn law enforcement position uh, that would fill details. Um, that would be trained to do so. Um, that would go through the um, the uh, traffic control course that officers go through. So they'd have that training and that skill. Um, so he can probably talk about it much better than I can and advocate for it. Um, but he is not available tonight. Um, so okay. Uh, and I don't think it's going to impact his, well, I haven't seen his budget yet, but um, I don't anticipate that. Well, it shouldn't impact his budget if he's just going for details because those are paid outside. Um, so yeah, outside it could be contractor. an ongoing discussion. Right. But um, in, I guess, hmm, they would still be a town employee, though. I know we can fill details with officers from any town. I know. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I guess I don't understand we, it's mostly a way to get that person the training and have a person who can fill details. Uh, this would person would not be able to fill details at Castaways should they ever reopen. Because that has to be, a, that should be a police officer. Mm -hmm. Right. These are details where, you know, Verizon or somebody is repairing their wires or uh, some construction's going on. But I think if he can make the argument that it doesn't um, affect the budget and that by taking this person on, it helps helps fill traffic details, then I think, you know, that sounds good to me. So yeah. we want to, somebody make a motion that we'll table this until a later time when he's available. I think we should, yeah. I can move, I can move to table it. Okay, second. Okay, I have a motion made and second to table the traffic control officers. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself, aye. And the next item on is um, an email that was sent from Bill Smith. It says Wayne Hakovsky, but that was Bill Smith using Wayne's email through the water department. Um, Apparently we can't afford two email addresses. <laughs> no, God, no. And so, you know, just an oversight on it, you know, he, he's basically saying that, you know, with a lot of the investment to our infrastructure in the town in many different ways, um, He's suggesting we look into um, expanding what we offer for grounds. And Brian, why don't you go up? You have probably had a discussion with him about it. Um, I have not. He, no, I have okay. not had a discussion about it. It's okay. The only discussion I've had is with you um, and my just my own observations and, and feelings about it. Um, I, I think just at, at this point, it's it's a little bit too early to to, to think about um, hiring a comprehensive or a, a, a more expanded position. There's a lot of moving parts that that we don't know, and one of the big ones is is what's happening with Hurley Heat Park and with Frontier. Um, we're trying to get a, a meeting together to talk about um, their responsibilities and duties at. Um, at Hurley Heat Park, um, there's you know there's movement in Deerfield to get to move some of the playing fields um, closer to the school, and then if that um, if Hurley Heat doesn't uh, Hurley Heat <laughs> Frontier doesn't need the um, you know our athletic fields at Hurley Heat, then they're going to have less of an incentive to maintain them. Um, so that's really a, a moving piece that we don't know about right now. The the restroom maintenance is contracted out there. Um, in all the other, in all of our other buildings, 
Um, I don't think that there's a lot of um, maintenance that's not happening. Um, we have our custodian who, who works here, and I think it's an adequate number of hours. He also works at the uh, also works at the library, and he also um, does some work at the town hall. Um, and in terms of in terms of exterior maintenance, um, you know, the highway department really does that. Um, and they've even started doing some of the, I guess it would call it some of the maintenance or maintenance at oversight maintenance or whatever you want to call it, deferred maintenance on some of the buildings. Um, they were up here doing some caulking on the roof. I think they did some um, at the library as well. Um, so I don't necessarily, I, I don't see the need to expand the position now, um, but that's, that's really just my thoughts. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you, Brian. And the other thing that I just wanted to also say that we don't know at the moment is we haven't gotten a formal proposal from, from Jim Ross. And that is there was money that was donated towards the Veterans Memorial that is going to pay Snow's landscaping to come in and do maintenance. And that hasn't been ironed out yet. So I don't know if the money there is good for six months or six years, but um, Jim Ross said he was going to be getting in touch with Snow's and myself so that we could all be on the same page and have a, have a proposal from Snow's so we know how much, how long that con or that money will last as far as taking care of it. Snows did tell me, you know, at the moment, because all the plantings are new, it doesn't need an awful lot in the, in the near future. It's going to be as they start to grow bigger, that's when trimming needs to be done. But certainly within the first year, very little bit of maintenance as far as trimming will be needing to be done. Um, the other thing that I had suggested and have said to a few people, and that is, you know, when it comes to athletic fields, I know when we are building the softball field, Brett Gawanter from, who is an employee from Deerfield Academy had made the statement that it seems like the towns around here don't really put any money into maintenance on the athletic fields and they deteriorate and then it gets to the point where political pressure is put on Deerfield Academy to come fix up the fields and he says it's it's frustrating for him because he has been back to many of the fields that need to have repairs done because they've been neglected and so I'm almost to the point where you know from a grounds maintenance person looking at just simply all of the town's athletic fields and Frontier included, by the time someone, even if it's a part-time person, could go from each town and do some maintenance on the athletic fields and rotate through all of the fields. And then by the time you get back, you'd be back to square one. It, it might be a position that all four towns and Frontier could sponsor or pay for for someone to do some, um, but you know, we, you know, certainly us, we invested $100,000 in the softball field. And if we don't maintain it, mm -hmm. it's money wasted. Yeah. It occurs to me that what you're describing, the need is not something I would call a custodian. No. Uh, it, uh, so maybe oh, no. The, the, the need that Bill is talking about are you going to go get your glasses? Are you done? You want to go get your glasses? Uh, okay. I'm not quite. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Um, no, my, my ride is here. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. The, the, the need that Bill talked about um, wasn't really exterior maintenance. Wasn't really what I think a custodian does. It seems like it's like groundskeeping at the parks is that and mm. but you know maybe I, I i'm not quite reading it right but uh if what we really need is a better you know care of our parks then that's sort of a different thing it's not really a custodian you know
So how do we get more um, information about this to make a ra uh, rational decision? I mean, we could, I guess, ask him to come to a meeting if we wanted to, or um, I don't really know if that's necessary. Um, I think he was just trying to point out the fact that um, he sees a lot of neglect and it's probably not just in Waitley, but in Waitley that specifically that he feels places would look better if they were trimmed. I know, like for instance, me, the highway department, we mow the lawn like at the town hall, the library, things like that, but we don't have any equipment to do any trimming. Um, I don't say, you know, my department has training as far as professional knowing how to trim a trim certain shrubs and I wouldn't want to tell my highway employees to go trim the shrubs at at the brand new things at the veterans memorial and find out that they cut them too short and all of a sudden they died and and say well how come you did that and I'm saying well we don't we're not arborists or not you know we're not that's not our job you know what I'm saying so Right. Yeah. But so but he's suggesting somehow we, we have a 20 hour a week grounds person. I just went and found the email. I read it too long ago. But um he's saying building and grounds position. Well, it's really grounds. Um to deal with issues inside and out. Well, that I think he's a little less clear on. Um it sounds as though he thinks no one is doing anything inside the town hall which I think is not true. I think we do have a custodian who works on inside of the town hall. Um, but he's mostly really talking about exterior things, the mowing, um, cleaning and maintaining plantings. Now cleaning's a little bit vague. And then the list goes on, although it doesn't go on here. Um, facilities and grounds will inevitably deteriorate if we don't maintain them, that's absolutely true. And let me know what you think. I guess I, I think I need to know more about what, um, you know, what, ex like, what exactly, like, what are we I doing like now? And then, and how would, how would we be better off if we had a, a person to do that? And that's why I'd like to know is, are, are we sort of in the same position that all four towns are? Mm -hmm. And would and could we benefit cooperatively coming together and combining our resources to maybe address this issue? I like the idea of you know, seeing if there's an opportunity to combine resources. But my other thought is, if it really is outdoor work because the indoor work is being done, we're talking about a, are, are we talking about a seasonal position? rather than a year-round position. Yeah, it kind of sounds seasonal to me, doesn't it? Yeah, that's my take as you were talking. But we need to we need to know more about what he's what he needs. Do we want to vote this one to table it as well for more information? Well, what are the action items for more information? Um, I think probably hearing from Bill might be one way, but he, or he, we could just email him and say, could you be more specific? Um, and I guess the, to me, the other question is, well, what are we doing now? How do these places get mowed now? Um, like Hurley, who takes, who takes care of mow? I mean, Hurley, he gets mowed, right? But maybe it's the is the rec commission taking care of that or taking care of it badly, perhaps. Um, you know, certainly in many cases, like for instance, some of the field maintenance historically, when it came to helping maintain the the athletic fields, it was always put on the the coaches or the parents of the kids participating in the sporting events having work bees, things of that nature. And, and 
as time goes on, that just doesn't work anymore. They, they, they ask for a group of volunteers to come help dress the fields up and nobody will show up to do it. So mm -hmm. only Wayne. Only Wayne <laughs> yeah. um, so that's the kind of thing that the towns and I'm sure it's not just Waitley that are, they're that dealing with these kinds of things. And so well, who can start the discussion? I mean, I, I don't know who, who would be, I would be a terrible person because all I think I need to do is mow the grass. Clearly, there's other things you need to do. So uh, I'm not a good person for this. Um, but like, who could actually figure out what needs to get done? What fraction of that is getting done? What's not getting done? And who might be a good partner? Because if uh, I don't know that Bill's guess of 20 hours per week is correct, but if it is, then 20 hours a week during four months of the year, um, that person might also have other, you know, some, somebody with those skills is going to also be busy in the summer with other things, you know, other jobs they can do probably paid better than we can. Would a town similar in size to us, like Sunderland, maybe be able to make that a full-time job? Is that even desirable? I don't really know. But yeah. somebody has to pursue that. And I don't know if Bill is willing to do it. I'm not sure there's anybody on this committee who can do that unless somebody here is able to volunteer for you know to look into that a bit more. Uh, Keith, I think you and I could have a, another discussion in, in write down what what the needs are and how they're being met okay. um i mean i i see a distinct separation between park and field maintenance as opposed to town facility maintenance um i don't see huge needs with with town facilities is there a more efficient way to do it in terms of you know how it's done maybe and we can look at that um and then in terms of you know, parks and field maintenance, I think that's going to be something that's a little specialized. Um, but I also think if it's the cost of, of course, I always go, go back thinking about money, but, you know, if it's the cost of, of participating in the program, the field maintenance, then it's either something we support with a general budget or or the user fees are increased a little bit, whether that be rec leagues, whether that be adult leagues, whether that be, um, you know, rentals, whatever. Um, I think there's ways to fund it if it, if it needs to be done. So what yeah, do you I mean, by all means, especially in this day and age, if the parents are saying that they're too busy to come help out on a weekend, then maybe like you just said, you got to raise the user fees to, to pay somebody to do that. Yeah. And the rental fees, I, I think there's adult baseball leagues that uses the field as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be a conversation with, with Frontier and the town about how that relationship is going to look going forward. Um, currently, Frontier does a lot of the, the field maintenance, but they don't do it. And I, Keith, I think you're the one who told me this. They don't do it once the season's done, essentially, right? Um, so they maintain it during the season, and then crabgrass grows in, like crabgrass grows everywhere in New England, and it just you know falls apart a little bit so yeah and, and again they're doing the they're i wouldn't say they're going above and beyond the call of duty down there they're doing they're stretched in and their their mm -hmm. employees have other things to do back at frontier so yeah. they're not spending a lot of time doing a lot of the the finesse type of maintenance it's just get in mow and get out so we can work out we can work on that offline okay um any other and items not anticipated so i just want to talk about the salary survey a little bit we had an unanticipated mm -hmm. staff absence um so that will be finalized shortly um and we should have that for our next meeting which is a good segue into talking about our next meeting. Yeah. So it should be after February 10th, right? I would, yeah, if we want to get the CPI for February.
So that February 10th is a Thursday. So we're looking at the week of the 14th. And on the week of the 14th, there's a finance committee meeting at six that yep. I believe I am expected to attend. And I am also. Me too. <laughs> So that Tuesday might not be a great day. We're back into classes. So most days um, I can't come this early, but Tuesdays, it looks like I actually, I'm not teaching from five to six on Tuesdays. Woo, woo. Every other day I'm teaching a little bit there, but. I'm gonna throw a wrench because just for February, I am teaching a class from six to eight on Tuesdays. Oh, okay. Well, let's figure out another day then. And Thursdays, I teach from five to seven. I'm sorry, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, Wednesdays, I, I, not every Wednesday, but many Wednesdays, I have a meeting that goes until about 5.30. Um, so if it's six or later, I'm okay with Wednesdays. How is Wednesday? Wednesdays are all right with me. Betty, how's a Wednesday for you? It's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Wednesday the 16th? That works for me. At 6. At 6. The 16th at 6 p.m. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I would um, move to adjourn then. Second. Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself? Aye. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Yep. Thank you. Bye.